Hello everyone, my name is Adib. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the abnormal gait. Let's get started. So in this video, we are going to have a look at abnormal gait and this is more like an introduction video where I'll give you an overview to the whole concept and in future videos we will have a look at those typical gates and we'll see what happens in each gate. So without any further ado, let's get started. So today we are talking about the abnormal gate and the main thing to realize over here is to understand abnormal gate, we first need to know what a normal gate is. So if you haven't checked out my previous videos on normal gate, there is a whole playlist on it. You can check out on top right corner I'll link it on top and that will set a good foundation for you to learn about abnormal gait as abnormal gait is basically deviation from the normal gait, right? So if you understand the normal gait really well, it's very easy to understand abnormal gait. So to make abnormal gait really simple, it is very important to understand the causes of your abnormal gait and these can be divided into two. There is structural cause and there is functional cause. Now, before we get into the depths of that, first let's have a look at how can we assess a gate. And the gate can be assessed by qualitative assessment and quantitative assessment. When I say qualitative, it is basically what you observe and what you can describe. So when you see a person limp, you can definitely see that, okay, there is improper weight distribution, but you don't know exactly how much, right? So limping, symmetry in the arm swing. So how he is swinging his right versus left arm and typical compensatory strategies like Trendlinburg gait, which we will cover in future videos. These are some of the qualitative assessments that I can mention. On the quantitative side, we have exact numbers to describe the gait and if there is anything abnormal going on. So for example, the ground reaction force, the amount of force that is put by the person into the ground, the speed of the gate. So how much distance is being covered in what time will give us the gate speed and the angles that are formed by the joint. These objective data points can help us assess the gate as well. So those are the two ways you can assess your gate. So now that we know how we assess the gate, let's have a look at the different types of causes so first is the structural where proper structural changes will be seen in the body. For example, leg length discrepancy where one leg is shorter than the other or longer than the other. And there is functional where the timing or amplitude of muscle activity is abnormal. And this can be caused because of various reasons. For example, some abnormality in your central nervous system. Now, before we go and have a look at different examples, I want to establish few things which will set a good foundation for your gait assessment and understanding of your abnormal gait. It is very important for us to understand that it's not like there is one condition, say for example, uh, stroke. And because of stroke, you'll see this type of gait. Or if you have knee pain, you'll see this kind of gait. That's not exactly how it works. It's not as simple as that, just straightforward process. But rather what we usually see is your body has a pain point. It is not able to do something. And then it finds an adaptation, how it can do in different ways. And every body will find different ways to adapt to that same pain point or same problem. So for example, if your knee is not bending, it will find different ways in which it can still carry on going forward, move around, but in different ways, right? So it's not like one condition and that's how you fix the gait. Rather than that, it's a problem and your body adapts to that problem in different ways. Sometimes these adaptations are conscious. The person does this consciously, whereas many times the person won't even know what adaptation his body has chosen and he'll just go along with it. Now, our role as physios is to understand what adaptation has taken place and is that the best adaptation for that person? And if not, we can address that by changing the length of the leg, by giving them a different shoe, which has different height, or sometimes strengthening the muscle and helping that adaptation, or sometimes providing a different way to do the same task. And finally, 
we can also help the person by strengthening the adaptation meaning if he has chosen that he will do circumduction then we can strengthen those muscles around there so that the person can do these movements effectively without getting injured so to kind of give a broader perspective your body has a pain point and it adapts to that pain point in different ways by using different types of adaptations and we see that in the form of different abnormal gates and usually these new adaptations that are formed are not the most energy efficient so as physios we have a look at the broader perspective and see if that adaptation will help the patient and if it does we strengthen that adaptation or we can find other ways in which this abnormal gait can be fixed so now that we have understood the broader perspective of abnormal gait let's have a look at different adaptations that occur when the cause is structural versus when the cause is functional so when there is leg length discrepancy where you can see one leg is shorter than the other you can address this discrepancy or your body can address this discrepancy by different ways so first one is the obvious equinus so the short leg goes into an equinus position that is down your ankle goes into plantar flexion and then it equalizes that difference right so equinus means horse so it looks like a foot of a horse and that's why it's called as equinus so that is one way this leg length discrepancy can be equalized now other adaptations can be one if one leg is shorter what happens is the other leg also becomes short by flexion at the knee so by creating that flexion at the knee and adjustments relative adjustments at hip and ankle you can get the foot at the same line and that is the second way your body can adapt in case of a leg length discrepancy then there is another way is that is the vaulting where if one leg is significantly shorter than the other what will happen is the first leg will touch the ground and the second leg will go there and the person will vault over it so if you have seen pole vaulting where the person puts a pole and vaults over it or goes over it jumps over it so it's the similar case where one leg the longer leg is used to vault over the shorter leg so that is another adaptation that is seen in structural changes of leg length discrepancy and then finally another example that can be given is circumduction where if one leg is shorter than the other and instead of so when the person has to clear the ground because this leg is longer he'll either have to bend the knee right and hip but if he is not able to do that for some reason he can do circumduction that is basically getting the leg like that crossing circumducting it over and then going forward i'll shoot videos of each of these different gates in future when we are discussing about each of the gate separately but you see how structural difference that is leg length discrepancy that is seen in the body can be addressed in different ways by either bending the longer leg at the knee or extending the ankle to equalize the longer leg and so many other ways so when the cause of the abnormal gait is functional that is for example abnormality in the cns one of the examples that was given on the slide was parkinsons where the balance is affected you will see shorter stride lengths right because longer stride will displace their center of gravity more and it will challenge the balance of the person and that's why he can adapt by taking shorter stride lengths another pattern that is seen in parkinsons is loss of the heel to toe pattern so where there is heel strike and then there is toe so if you have watched my video on normal gait you know that that is a very important pattern that is seen in normal gait and this is lost in parkinsons but if you notice on the slide this pattern is also lost in patients post op knee not all of them but some of them because the range of motion at the knee the terminal extension range is lost it can be lost because of pain swelling bunch of reasons but if you see that same heel to toe pattern is lost because of the knee so again it is very important to realize the context of it and not just relate a condition to a pattern that you see 
and then finally we also see circumduction that we just spoke about yeah circumduction in stroke because of difficulty to bend the knee so loss of strength in these muscles or hip flexion difficulty to create that hip flexion or difficulty to create dorsiflexion at the ankle all these reasons can cause the person to achieve this circumductory pattern in their gait so as you see different patterns can be seen in different conditions and it's for us to logically connect the dots and see what is going underneath so now that we have understood different types of adaptations that occur in gait let's quickly summarize this abnormal gait so first we saw how assessment can differ that is qualitative versus quantitative assessment then we saw different causes of abnormal gait structural where the leg length can be different and this can be adopted through equinus that is ankle plantar flexion position vaulting over the leg keeping one leg bent or circumduction whereas on the other side on functional side we saw that if the cns is affected if the balance is affected in parkinsons they can have shorter stride length whereas in parkinsons again you might see loss of heel to toe pattern but this kind of pattern is also seen in post operative knee cases where there is reduction in range of terminal extension or there is or this pattern can be adopted due to pain and then finally circumduction can be seen in stroke as well so basically this video gives you an overview of how abnormal gait really presents it's not that you have a condition and then you have a gait pattern related to that condition but it is more like your body has a pain point and there are different ways it can adapt to these pain points and our role as physios is to have a overlook at this and see if the adaptation is right for the patient and then accordingly intervene